Well, looks like I've drowned the short straw once more to host BCTV's weekly media roundup, but that means I get to spend the next 15 minutes with you. I'm Roland Boyden for 545 Live, BCTV's weekly media roundup, and I've got a jam-packed 15-minute edition here. On deck tonight, we'll break down the big news from Washington with the government shutdown crisis narrowly averted last night. We'll also follow up on Wednesday night's fire on Elliott Street in Brattleboro. And we'll tune into this week's heated Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel open forum in town. Uh, all that and more, we do it. Let's uh, look at downtown behind me here. There we go. All that and more, we do it in 15 minutes. So if you've got the time, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Like every other American, these federal employees have mortgage payments to make, they have car payments to make, they have college loans to pay off, they have to pay off all of their basic needs like every other human being, and they're sitting there at home or sometimes at work and they're wondering, how am I going to do this? Welcome back to this October 18th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. Uh, that's footage of Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders at a press conference held earlier this week to discuss Thursday's impending default deadline for House and Senate leaders in Washington to not just reach but bring to a vote an agreement to reopen the federal government. Default that was narrowly avoided last night with the president signing into law a measure the Chicago Tribune referred to as hastily cobbled together, albeit one that will keep the U.S. and world economies just north of certain doom, at least for a little while. And while millions of Americans directly affected, along with everyone else across the globe, eyeing the future of a still uh, shaky worldwide economy, uh, we've all maybe uh, had enough heart-stopping suspense, I suppose. But last night's measure passed 81 to 18 in the Senate and 285 to 144, and the House carries with it a January 15, 2014 expiration date on government funding, and it only raises the debt ceiling until February 7th of this coming year. So that leaves Washington uh, just three short months to produce uh, what one would hope would be a more permanent solution that led the president to declare last night that, quote, we need to get out of the habit of governing by crisis, end quote. Uh, you can track more on that story uh, with a local twist at reformer.com or uh, track their videos at tout.com slash reformer where we check in often during the shows with plenty of local news. Uh, there was plenty of local uh, news with a fire in downtown. We've got the script, the story, the close-up, and the clips, as well as some aerial footage, so let's roll it all. A cloud of smoke that spread across downtown Wednesday afternoon left residents from across the region with flashbacks to the now legendary Brooks House fire of 2011, with firefighters from 12 different towns working through the night last night to extinguish a blaze that broke out in a three-and-a-half-story apartment complex at 214 Elliott Street at roughly 4.30 p.m. on October 16th. By sunrise the next day, the fire had been fully extinguished and all 17 residents, as well as their pets, had been safely accounted for, leaving a sleepless property owner, Bob Remy Powers, to dub the fire departments involved and their efforts, quote, fantastic. During his reformer interview, Remy Powers, who also told the paper he would be working with other area landlords to find replacement housing for his displaced tenants, displayed to a group of reporters who gathered outside the disheveled and dripping structure Thursday morning, uh, the building's original framed certificate bearing the name given the property by his father, which, despite its close proximity to the fire hoses, sustained no water or smoke damage during the fire's epic run Wednesday night. Again, uh, for more on that footage, you can take a glance at youtube.com slash TV, which includes the BCTV 545 Live First Look. And you can also follow uh, all Joe and his news gathering efforts at youtube.com slash Brattleboro News, all one word. All right, with that, uh, we'll move on in the stories there. And for that, that means going back into the close-up. The Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel may have had some lively public meetings in the past, but with last month's announcement that Vermont Yankee owners Entergy Nuclear would be voluntarily closing Vermont's lone nuclear reactor effective quarter four of next year, this week's VSNAP open forum at the high school saw new levels of concern and uncertainty from area residents who turned out in full force to quiz the panel on the state's role in sorting through the impending shutdown, decommissioning, 
and subsequent cost for all that to the taxpayers of the Green Mountain State, with panel member and Athens County Senator Mark McDonald addressing the much-discussed concept of nuclear safe store at BY in no uncertain terms. They did not have the authority to make the promises that they made. And you know, I've been on this panel for 15 years. And every time we have said slow down, that we're about to get, we're gonna, about to be left holding the bag, right. this panel has been ignored. And other times this panel has not made recommendations and actions have taken place and deals have been made and we've been left holding the bag. That full V-SNAP hearing from this Wednesday, October 16th can be viewed in its entirety at brattlebrotv.org. Get the full picture by watching the full video at brattlebrotv.org and of course it'll show on BCTV Channel 10 all next week as well. Thanks to hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez who recently walked away with producer of the year at our annual meeting uh, for her hundreds upon hundreds of hours. In fact, uh, more than a program a week she was producing this past year. Congratulations to her on that award. Speaking of that, uh, she got some recognition at this most recent select board meeting where she was, as she does each and every select board meeting, volunteering to be on camera. Let's take a look. I just wanted to take this opportunity. Um, we had our annual meeting last week where, among other things, we acknowledged our volunteer producers. And those are the volunteers who you see all the time here who make BCTV work. And uh, there was one person missing from the room last night when we were awarding and, and giving her the Producer of the Year Award. And that is Maria Dominguez, who is here tonight as she is every single select board <laughs> meeting. And before we send you on your way to enjoy this here weekend, let's take a look at uh, the bevy of events coming up for the Brattleboro area with our latest webisode edition of our interactive video calendar hosted by none other than the one and only Roland Boyden. So Roland, I can't even stand looking at uh, you after all this chit chat here, but take it away. What's the deal with the calendar? We start with the uh, Calendar Frequenters Next Stage Arts Project and their often collaborators Apron Theater Company bringing the Arthur Miller classic Death of a Salesman to their uh, 16 Kimball Hill Road Putney based uh, studio and theater uh, performance area in downtown Putney uh, for the next four days, including tonight, uh, tomorrow, Friday, October 18th, Saturday, October 19th, and then a matinee performance on Sunday the 20th as well. Let's take a look at our video spotlight. We have so much wonderful stuff coming up. Um, and again, people, I encourage people to go to the website, ne nextstagearts.org, to try to keep abreast of everything we've got going on. But we're excited about it and we love having people come from Brattleboro, a short 10 minutes up the highway to exit four and uh, make a night of it in Putney. We'll move along in the calendar now and look at some other events happening this Saturday, October 19th, including an afternoon 3 to 5 p.m. performance of the Ruckus Circus Spectacular from the Nimble Arts Project. Can I figure out how to point on the board? There we go, now I'll make eye contact with you again. All right, uh, it's the uh, Circus Spectacular, uh, Ruckus Circus Spectacular from Nimble Arts. That's a clickable link to find out more. It is three to five in their uh, downtown space here in Brattleboro. Let's uh, take a look at the video spot. We'll close out with our third video spotlight also this Saturday night as the Latches Theatre hosts their grand reopening. Uh, they've been closed since August 1st of this year uh, to get some renovations in the main theater underway. There'll be brand new paintwork done on the constellations on the ceiling of the main theater, some new chairs as well, all part of a generous capital contribution campaign from the community. Now they'll have uh, the likes of world-renowned documentary filmmaker Ken Burns on hand uh, to back up uh, the premiere screening of his latest work. Uh, for that grand reopening celebration, which is at the Latches Main Theater this Saturday, October 19th. We've got a video spotlight. Here's Latches Arts Managing Director Gail Nunziata talking about just why this project is so important to the community. This is the kind of a venue in Brattleboro that really deserves to have an investment made. The town is very sophisticated. It's got a quirky artsiness to it. We bring in communities from all over. We want you to be part of our community. We want you to own a little piece of the Latches Theater 
in Brattleboro, Vermont. That does it for another edition of our weekly media round of 545 Live, but we'll be back next week right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8 for another full 15-minute edition when we'll sum up a week's worth of video, including another video calendar. You can also subscribe at youtube.com slash TV to get all the latest news highlights and more uh, updated each uh, and every time there's something newsworthy happening. And of course, our regular uh, selections as well, like that Channel 10 report and interactive video calendar. In the meantime, until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>